Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mommy Tummy Fix channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Camille. I am one of the coaches here at Mommy Tummy Fix and also one of the co-founders of this program. We would love to have you subscribe, hit that red button so you can join our community. But I thought today would be fun to kind of share with you my story of how I have lost 20 pounds as a mom of four babies, as a mom of four kids, and how I've managed to keep it off for over five years. So if you want to learn, stick around. Okay, I feel like my whole life I've always been looking for the quick fix. What is going to help me lose weight the fastest? Or what is going to give me my six pack in six weeks? I know that you have heard those promises before. I know that you've searched for those things. I know I'm not alone. What I found is that I was on this diet roller coaster. I was up, I was down, I was up, I was down. My weight was constantly doing this as were my emotions as were how I felt. I was tired, then I had energy, then I was so exhausted, and then it was just this crazy all over the place. And what was crazy too is that was how I felt about myself. It just, my emotions were everywhere. And ultimately I felt like a failure, that I couldn't keep the weight off, that this wasn't working for me. And I just knew there had to be something else. After I had my fourth baby, I was done having kids. And I thought, okay, now is the time, once and for all, I am going to figure this out. I was just done being on the roller coaster. I was ready for me to figure out me. So this is what I did. Now, before I start, here's the thing. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a personal trainer. All that I'm doing is just sharing what worked for me as a busy working mom in hopes that it maybe helps somebody else out there and helps you to see that there are so many options and that you have to find what's right for you. So that's why I'm sharing today. As I was working to lose that weight and as I was working on learning myself and how to be the healthiest version of me, there were three areas that I focused on. First one was food. I've heard the quote before, you can't outrun your fork. I love to work out. I've always worked out, but for some reason, I couldn't lose the weight just by working out. And it's because of that saying, you can't outrun your fork. I've also heard abs are made in the kitchen. And ultimately it does come down to, you have to clean up your eating somehow. I really do feel the true health starts with your diet and what it is that you are putting into your body. Now, I have purchased every diet plan on the planet. I can say I have tried them all. I did Whole30, but I only lasted for like two days, so like Whole2. I did low carb, but I was so tired and out of energy that that didn't work for me. I would cut out dairy, but then I would binge on a gallon of ice cream later. I even did this high spinach diet where you add like two cups of spinach to every meal you eat. and. And I couldn't keep that up. I was just doing what everybody else was telling me to do instead of finding what would work for me. And here's the thing, just like all of our fingerprints are totally unique, so are our body's needs. So is the nutrition and the fuel that our individual body needs. There isn't a one size fits all diet plan out there. If there was, we would all be on it and we would all be at the healthiest version of ourselves. That's not how it works. And because we're all so different and I knew that I was different, I had to find what would work for me. Now, I knew that the diets of restriction or depriving yourself of certain things didn't work for me because as soon as I told myself no more cake, all that I could think about was cake. So I decided, okay, I'm not going to think about restricting anything. All that I'm going to think about is adding to my diet. I told myself that nothing is off limits, but all that I would do was just add some more to my plate. And so at every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, my goal was to add a fruit or a vegetable. That's it. I didn't cut anything out. I simply just added a fruit or a vegetable to every meal that I ate. It was pretty eye-opening to me to realize how few fruits and vegetables I really was eating. Did you know that the recommended daily serving of fruits and vegetables for an adult is five to six servings a day? A day. I was maybe getting one to two, three if I was lucky. Now I was getting three, but still. I wasn't even hitting the recommended daily servings. I started to realize maybe I hadn't been fueling my body in the best way that it could be. So I just focused on adding that one fruit or vegetable. And what was so interesting, I felt so much fuller after each meal just by adding that one serving of fruits or vegetables. And after that kind of became the norm, I was doing that for a week or two, I decided, okay, I'll start adding a fruit or a vegetable as a snack, or maybe add a second serving of fruits or vegetables at a meal. So that that bumped me up to five or six servings every single day. And you know, it was so interesting that I didn't have room or cravings for a lot of the junk food that I used to eat. Just by adding to my diet, 
I was already starting to cut out some of the junk that I used to consume. And I didn't tell myself I couldn't have it. And if I wanted it, I would still eat it. What was interesting is I didn't crave it as often as I used to. So because eating a fruit or vegetable was so eye-opening, I decided, okay, I'm gonna keep playing with this. See what else I can do. I decided my next focus would be on water. I have heard of celebrities say, oh, I drink a gallon of water a day. And I was like, there's no way. I would be a sloshy mess if I was drinking that much water. And I'd have to go to the bathroom all the time, right? So I thought, I don't know. But I thought they've gotta be onto something. So I'm gonna just try and drink a little bit more water. And what I did is I just would drink one cup of water before every single meal. So I'm just kind of habit stacking here. Like I'm going to eat dinner anyway. Might as well add a fruit or vegetable to that meal. And I'll drink a cup of water before that meal. A couple of things happened when I started to add water. So first of all, I realized how dehydrated I probably had been. I was maybe getting one to two cups of water before this. Didn't realize how much I really did need and how much my body loved it. I also noticed I didn't eat as much at every meal because I was a little bit more filled up with water. It was so fascinating to me. I also noticed that the brain fog that I would always blame on motherhood because it's a real thing. You notice that the brain fog was just a little bit clearer. And I thought, okay, is this tied to fruits and vegetables? or is it tied to water? Regardless, this is awesome. The third thing that I noticed as I started regularly incorporating more water was that my digestion was so much better. I'd actually had struggled with some digestion problems in the past, some constipation, and what's crazy is everything was flowing a lot better after I started drinking more water. So besides just adding water to my meals, I started carrying around a 32 ounce water bottle, a big one. In fact, still have it here today. I carry it around everywhere I go. I kept it with me in the car. Whenever I was doing a carpool or picking up kids from school, I always had my water with me. And it was crazy as I had it by me, how much more regularly I drank it. As I carried this around, I started drinking one to two of these a day. You know what else happened? I noticed that my skin started to clear up as I was drinking more water. And I thought, is this from the fruits? Is this from the vegetables? Is this from the water? I don't know, but I'm loving it. What I want you to notice is that at this point, I still haven't taken anything out of my diet. All that I have been doing is adding to it. For me, that mindset of adding to my diet instead of taking away made this feel possible, made this feel doable. So here's the thing. I was a couple weeks in at this point and it was kind of becoming a game. The scale hadn't moved too much, but I was feeling really good and my skin was feeling good and my energy was feeling good and my digestion was feeling good and all these things were feeling good. And so I thought, well, what else can I do to help myself feel better. And so I started playing around with the sugar that I was eating. The American Heart Association recommends 25 grams per day of sugar for women, which if you start to look at any type of nutrition labels, you'll see that that adds up really fast. I could hit that in one meal. And while yes, there is a lot of sugar in just the everyday foods that we eat, I decided to put my focus on candy, baked goods, and on sugary drinks. Now, I'm not a big soda pop drinker, so that wasn't too tricky for me but I love a good baked good. A cookie all day long. Donuts, yes. Plus Reese's peanut butter cups, those are my go-to. That's how I get through the days. And so I just decided to maybe find ways to consume less of the processed sugar and find other ways to get that sweet craving in that I wanted. So what I did is I would take one to two days every single week and instead of eating like a cookie or multiple cookies or handfuls of M&Ms on that day, I would try to find something else to swap it out with. Maybe a little bit of a healthier swap. Found some really great recipes on Pinterest. So instead of my nightly bowl of ice cream, I tried to make banana ice cream or I would have some Greek yogurt or I found these yummy little peanut butter ball bites that were made with honey and peanut butter and they were so good. And I just was trying to find these little swaps that had a little bit less processed sugar. I continued to do this, just swapping out treats here and there, not totally restricting myself, but just being super mindful of what it was I was putting into my body and what's crazy is I started having more of these healthier sweets than the processed sweets and it just kept going. I kept feeling good, feeling better. My pants were getting looser. My skin was getting brighter. All these things were adding up. By this point, not only was I feeling really good and my pants were feeling a little bit looser, but you could physically start to see some of the changes. Now, I want you to recognize this was kind of a slow process. It took a long time for me to figure this all out. But if you're okay with going slow, what I love about that is that you are making lifestyle habits and lifestyle changes that will last so much longer than any crash diet you'll ever go on. And what's cool about these things too is 
This is totally doable for the rest of forever. This is totally sustainable. I can always add a fruit or a vegetable to my dinner. I can do it when I'm on vacation. I can do it while I'm traveling. I can do it on car rides. Like you can always find a way to get a fruit or a vegetable in. You can always find a way to drink water and you can always find a way to make a healthier swap of processed sugary food that maybe will serve your body a little bit better. So today, even five years later, I'm doing these same three things and I have been able to do them for five years when it comes to eating, which is getting five to six servings of fruit and vegetables every day, drinking a lot of water, and then just being mindful and aware of the processed sugar that I put into my body. And is there a healthier swap that I can make for it? Okay, and here's the last tip when it comes to eating. And this is something that I started to incorporate a few years ago, but at every meal on my plate, I just focus on getting in a protein and a vegetable. Now, I eat other things besides just protein and vegetable, I still eat bread, I still eat rolls, I still eat pasta. In fact, blood work has shown that my body needs carbs. It's not good for me to have a low carb diet. I actually need a higher carb diet, but I know that if I have a protein and a vegetable on my plate, I can add some other things in there as well, that I'm going to be feeling pretty dang awesome. So that's what I did when it came to food and nutrition. I didn't count calories. I didn't restrict myself. I wasn't counting macros. I just was learning to listen to my body and what it is it needed. And then I would listen to it after I fed my body to see how it felt. And honestly, I know that's like not the answer that everybody wants to hear. It would be easier if there was some type of quick fix or a pill you could take. But honestly, it just comes down to learning about your body and learning what it needs. I still eat cake on people's birthdays. I still have big juicy burger at barbecues. I still will have a Reese's peanut butter cup every now and then but I also make sure that I have fruits and vegetables in my diet. I make sure that I'm drinking a lot of water. I make sure that I'm watching the processed sugar that goes into my mouth. And then I also prioritize protein and vegetables and just make sure that I've got that on my plate. This is a slow process and it's not going to give you those crash diet results where you see big changes instantly. But here's the thing, the time is gonna pass anyway. You might as well pass it putting these habits and these small choices in place that will help lead you to who you want to become. And for me, I wanted to be someone who felt in control of food, in control of my life, in control of what I was putting into my body. And <laughs> that has made all the difference. And what's been cool about this is I have been able to keep it up for five years and I know that I can keep it up for the rest of my life. Okay, so the first thing that I worked on was food. The second thing was movement. So just like I had purchased so many different diet plans from other people, I also purchased so many exercise plans from other people. I followed a lot of fitness influencers on social media and personal trainers, and I had all their plans and was trying to do all their crazy intense workouts. And what was interesting was a lot of these people, they were not moms. They didn't work like I did. Like they had all the time in the world to work out and their bodies were maybe not as old as mine. I mean, they are probably in their early twenties and here I am closing in on 40. Like it just isn't going to be quite the same. And so I kind of had to let go of those really intense workouts and those just really extreme workout programs that I saw other people doing. And I had to focus on what it is that I could do. Now, Jared, my husband, he is a physical therapist. And as I was explaining to him, like, okay, I want to focus on exercise, but I need to find something that works best for me. And he then explained to me the concept of LIS. So what LIS is, is low intensity, steady state cardio, or I do it as cardio, but it's keeping your heart rate in a low fat burning zone. So when you work out, depending on how hard you work out, your heart rate will be in one of these different zones. And so you've got like the fat burning zone and then you've got like an aerobic zone. And then when you start becoming like an athlete, you're like an anaerobic zone that gets way up there. And usually when I work out, especially when I was doing those more intense workouts, it was in more of a cardio or aerobic zone, which was pretty high intensity. And my husband told me that's a great workout to do, but what your fuel source is, is probably carbs. And he said, you want your fuel source to be fat. And so you've got to lower the intensity of your workouts a little bit and focus on being in that fat burning zone. He gave me the example of the old TV show, The Biggest Loser. I don't know if you remember that TV show, but he said, I want you to think about what were the contestants in the background doing when they weren't like getting interviewed or doing some intense one-on-one -on -one with Jillian. And then I was like, they were usually just walking on a treadmill. He's like, exactly. They were doing lists. They were being in that fat burning zone because that is how you melt the fat off. So to my mamas who want to burn off that fat, you have to be in a fat burning zone, which means you probably need to bring down the intensity of the workouts you are doing to be in this lower fat burning zone for your heart rate. 
for me, it was so much slower than what I was used to. And at first I was like, Jared, this is stupid. I'm not even sweating half the time. And he's just kept telling me, trust the process, trust the process. It's going to take a little bit longer. I feel like to get those results took a little bit longer than maybe some of the more extreme workouts that I used to do. But what was crazy is that after I finished these workouts, my joints didn't hurt and I wasn't sore the next day. So it was easy to get up and do bliss again. But for me, bliss was an absolute game changer. Suddenly workouts weren't something that I dreaded anymore because I knew they weren't going to be painful. They weren't going to be excruciating. And it became just a fun way for me to move my body. My favorite way is to go on a walk, but I can't always do that. And so then I started to get creative about different ways that I could be in my fat burning bliss zone. And what I found is anytime that I was mopping, or vacuuming, I was always in that fat burning zone. I just had to pick up the pace a little bit, doing laundry and stuff around my house, and I could get into that less fat burning zone, which was awesome. I also started finding some really fun workouts on YouTube and would love to do one of those every single day. So that's another option too. And just a little plug here on the Mommy Tummy Fix, we have a ton of fun and easy workouts that you can do right in your living room because I am so passionate about just moving every single day. So my goal was to move for 30 minutes every day Day and be in that fat burning zone. And what was so crazy to me is that as the weeks went on and I stayed consistent, making sure that my heart rate was in that lower zone, the fat really did start to just melt off. And when I combined it with those things that I was doing with my food, suddenly everything clicked. Now I told you there were three things that I did. The third thing that I did to help me lose weight after having four babies was core rehab. So after I had my last baby, I had a condition that's known as diastasis recti or ab separation. Now I'm lucky because my husband is a physical therapist and he diagnosed me just like that. He knew exactly what it was that I had. Here's the thing. A hundred percent of women experience this in their third trimester of pregnancy. And what it is, is when you have a baby, as your tummy grows, your abs separate, right? And so for most people, the few lucky people, their abs will come back together on their own. But there are some of us, one third of all women actually, whose abs won't come all the way back together and they're like separated. Mine were separated. I actually had a three finger separation. You could turn your three fingers and stick them into my stomach because the muscles had separated that far apart. Now there is surgery that you can get done to heal that diastasis recti. But what I want women to understand is that there is also rehab. You can heal this on your own with the right exercises and the right protocol. Now, why is diastasis recti a problem? Why is this ab separation a problem? Like, does it really matter if my abs didn't come back together? And honestly, it depends. But for me, a diastasis recti or an ab separation can be the cause of a couple different things going on. Number one, if you're a mom that has chronic back pain, your core actually wraps around your entire midsection. It's not just your six pack muscles, but it's the muscles that go all the way around. And so if you have chronic back back pain, it could be because of your ab separation or your diastasis recti. The second thing that you might be experiencing is because of that ab separation, what happens is that the insides of your guts start to protrude out because everything's not held in nice and tight. You've got this little coning that's going on in the middle and lots of things can protrude out so that it looks like you are still pregnant or you have this mom pooch that doesn't seem to go away no matter how well you eat or how far you run or how many crunches you do. The third problem that it can cause is problems with your pelvic floor. It's all connected. Your core is connected to your pelvic floor. And let me tell you why that's important. If you ever sneeze, cough, or laugh, and it causes you to pee your pants, that doesn't have to be a thing. After you have a baby, I know it's kind of the joke, like, oh, that's just what happens. And yeah, it does happen for a lot of moms, but it doesn't have to be the normal. And there are things that you can do to strengthen it. Your pelvic floor is a muscle and you can strengthen it and make it strong so that you don't have that problem anymore. So once again, Jared helped me out here. I'm super lucky to have a husband that's a physical therapist who also specializes in postpartum care. And so he ran me through some exercises and over the weeks that I was working on lists and that I was working on just watching my eating and adding different things in, I was also doing this core rehab and I was able to take my three finger ab separation and close it up tight. You can't even get one fingertip in there anymore. It is so tight. In his clinic, he's helped hundreds of women through diastasis recti and ab separation over the years. And it's been so cool to hear his stories and to hear the ladies he treats. So postpartum healthcare, especially here in the United States, has a lot of room for improvement. Most moms are not checked at their postpartum checkup after they have a baby for diastasis recti. Their OBs don't talk to them about it. They don't talk about pelvic floor dysfunction 
infection or any of the problems that happen after childbirth. What's crazy is that every mom needs and deserves some type of rehab after they have a baby. If you broke your leg, you would have rehab to help strengthen that leg once again. If you have surgery on your shoulder, you would do rehab to strengthen that shoulder again. There's rehab for elbows, there's rehab for hands, there's rehab for feet, there's rehab for necks, every body part. Why isn't rehab for moms after they have a baby the normal thing? And so that's what Jared and I are on a mission to do. We want to help bring postpartum rehab to everyone. <laughs> And so on this channel, the Mommy Tummy Fix, you are going to find all these things that I have talked about. You're gonna find core rehab videos that will help strengthen your core after you have a baby. And it doesn't matter if you had a baby six weeks ago, six months ago, or 60 years ago. Your pelvic floor and your core is a muscle that can be strengthened at any age and any stage. Postpartum doesn't have an expiration date. Once postpartum, always postpartum. And so these workouts can be for anybody. We're also going to have list workouts on this channel where low intensity, steady state cardio, to keep you in that fat burning zone and to help you melt the fat off. And then we're gonna be sharing with you tips and tricks just like with all of the food and nutrition tips that I shared earlier in this video. You're gonna find a lot more of these on this channel as well. So if you haven't subscribed yet, we would love to have you click that button and join this community. Now, we do have a comprehensive at-home postpartum rehab program that you can check out. Just head to mommytummyfix.com. I've got it all on there with all the information that you are going to need. Now, if you're ready to get started on your journey of working on core rehab, working on lists, working on just eating, adding more to your plate, adding those healthy things to your plate, check out this video and we'll get started on your journey right now. Okay, have a good one. We'll see you later, guys.